Welcome to this FAME Leadership Screencast, part of the Need to Know series. In this short presentation, we'll provide a brief overview of FAME Module 2 content, highlight what teachers tell us they most appreciate about this content, and share information about what school leaders can do to address potential sticky points in Module 2 implementation. In Module 2, teachers are focused on the first quadrant of the FAME model, Planning for Formative Assessment. The work in this module helps teachers answer the question, where is the learner going? This work sets the stage for all subsequent formative assessment practices. Teachers learn about three essential aspects to planning lessons with formative assessment, developing learning goals, establishing success criteria, and creating learning progressions. These three elements are necessary preconditions for eliciting evidence and using that evidence well. Learning goals, success criteria, and learning progressions provide teachers with the knowledge they need to give formative feedback. Without these three elements in place, formative assessment is difficult, if not impossible, to do. Let's look at each of these in turn. Learning goals refer to understanding, knowledge, skills, or application. In formative assessment, we encourage teachers to develop learning goals that are lesson-sized, which can be taught in a day or a few days of instruction. Success criteria refer to a concrete learning performance, something students will say, do, make, or write to indicate that they are moving towards the learning goals. These have a special function in formative assessment because they serve as the interpretive framework by which formative evidence is analyzed. Both teachers and students analyze student learning in light of the success criteria. Learning progressions support teachers and students to better understand how the learning is part of a bigger story in the development of student understanding or how learning progresses within that standard. By having a clear sense of what comes next in learning, teachers can provide more effective in the moment feedback. Many teachers report that Module 2 content helps them gain new insights about how students learn. A learning we often see begin to take shape in this module is teachers moving from measuring students in a got it, didn't get it way to thinking about how to measure students at various points along the progression of learning. Many teachers tell us they appreciate developing tools that can support them to think about learning in this way. Let's hear from the principal and teachers at a famed Cohort 1 school, Westside Elementary, talk about their use of success criteria. If implementation is on track during Module 2, you're likely to hear similar ideas from your teachers. Importance of the success criteria is almost immeasurable. They know what they have to do. I, I don't think since I've started using success criteria in writing, I've had one child come to me once they started to say, what am I supposed to do? They really never have, and I think if they did, I would say, it's on the poster over there. It's the success criteria. I think they really have a thorough understanding of what they're supposed to do and even because they set the success criteria with me, even a better understanding of how it relates to them in their own writing. I do co-construct the success criteria with them because it gives them an ownership in, the, in what they're responsible for. I do think it gives them a better understanding of what they need to, to make sure that they include into their writing. And honestly, I do get excited about it because it truly does work. It's different than the way we used to do our writing. The, the children have a greater self-accountability when they know that they, all they have to do is walk over with their piece and see if they've taken care of everything they need to take care of. And typically, the, the kids do that even before they ask somebody else to look. And that shows me that they're starting to, sh to take some self responsibility, they're starting to do some self-editing, or they're starting to do some self-checking before they even talk to peers. I do want them to um, explore, the, uh, explore the success criteria. I want them to discover what it is that I'm trying to accomplish today. What is my goal for today? At the end of the lesson or at the end of the day, what should I be able to do? And so making them part of that conversation is actually going to help them retain it even more. So they say, oh, I know, because we helped make that, or we helped create that. And so it just it resonates with them when one of their peers or themselves come up with it themselves. Now that we're involved in, in the work with FAME, you know, there have been some changes to my classroom for me, for my students, for both of us. I think one of the big changes for me is looking at ways to put it in student-friendly language, ways that, that they can self-assess and, and self-reflect even more than I was kind of already asking. To start with the success criteria, uh, if they're able to 
generate that success criteria eventually and know what they're responsible for, that's going to benefit both of us. Because I know as teachers, we spend so much time, you know, we give an assignment or we say, ask them to do something. And they know the sooner get back to their seats and hands are being raised and they're saying, what do we have to do? What do we need to do? What is it that he wants to see from us? And whereas the success criteria is already on the board, then they can look back at that and refer to that. And, and I see them doing that now. So that piece was initially our big message and our big takeaway from module one. And in team meetings, we were able to say, mm, that's, you're talking about an assessment tool that we could use in a formative way, but we really want to talk about what's happening during the flow of instruction. And then other pieces just became easy success criteria in the learning progressions. And we found that it's definitely easier to sit with a whole team and say, what would be the success criteria for this standard? Or what would the learning progression look like through this skill or strategy or standard? What, what does that look like? In the video clip, we heard Jill Wire share that the use of success criteria has helped her students know what to do and take greater responsibility for their own learning. Eddie Hampton found that using success criteria helps his students self-assess. Westside teachers are exploring how to construct success criteria with students so that students better understand and apply the criteria to their own learning. We find that leaders who provide opportunities for teachers to share these ideas amongst their faculty see faster adoption. As teachers become proficient in using these Module 2 practices, they come to recognize that these planning elements are the foundation for effective feedback. While these outcomes are powerful motivators for teachers and students alike, there are topics and concepts in Module 2 that can raise questions and require clarification. Here are four leadership essentials that will help you navigate Module 2 content with your faculty. Leadership essential number one, align Module 2 vocabulary with school vocabulary. Leaders can help by identifying how the key terms in Module 2 are similar to or different from current terms in use in your school. The terms big ideas and learning goals have very specific famed definitions and we have seen that these are defined in many different ways in the field. Leaders can encourage dialogue about how each of these terms is currently being used and clarify issues that arise. Vocabulary alignment will also help clarify the differences between learning progressions and other types of planning tools, such as scope and sequence documents, curriculum maps, and rubrics. Confusion about these terms is typical. Addressing them early will help teachers more effectively align internal resources and FAME course expectations. Leadership essential number two, provide guidance on the formative assessment lesson planning tool. We know that the only way to collect and use evidence of student learning in the moment is to plan for it. Teachers are first introduced to the formative assessment planning template in Module 2, and then this is extended with additional concepts introduced in Modules 3 and 4. This template serves as the link between the theory shared in the course and using these ideas in the classroom. Teachers do eventually come to know that this tool is helpful, but in the beginning, it can feel like just another thing. Leaders can help by providing clear expectations for its use. We recommend that teachers complete the planning template three to four times during the year. So clearly, this is not for every lesson, but enough to have teachers gain confidence as they work to apply these new practices in their classroom. Leadership essential number three, provide time for collaborative planning. As Molly Stewart pointed out in the video, many teachers tell us that it is easier to develop learning goals, success criteria, and learning progressions together. Leaders that find and provide time for teachers to meet, particularly during Module 2, often report a smoother implementation. This might mean encouraging formative assessment planning during existing teacher meeting time or offering other times for teachers to collaboratively plan. Additional meeting time increases shared accountability and ultimately supports implementation. Leadership essential number four, promote the student's role. Students need to know the success criteria too. Encourage teachers to have students develop success criteria using models and exemplars. Students' ability to internalize the success criteria is the point of this work, yet it is a change for many teachers. Help teachers take steps so that this can happen in their classroom and celebrate when teachers begin to try this out. 
We've found that when leaders address all four of the Module 2 Leadership Essentials, that implementation issues are smoother. This gives teachers confidence to try out new practices, such as sharing learning goals and success criteria with students, and using learning progressions to begin to think about formative feedback. The leadership essentials are outlined on the FAME Leadership Considerations document. You can find this document in the FAME Leadership folder on the MSDE online learning platform. The leadership considerations document provides specific leadership guidance for all five FAME modules. We remind you to join us for the next screencast in the Need to Know series, Four Things Leaders Need to Know to Successfully Implement FAME Module 3. Thanks for joining us.